even raising global temperatures. But what is El Nino and how does it happen? Firstly, we need to know what's normally happening in the tropical Pacific. This vast stretch of ocean sees consistent winds, called trade winds, that blow from east to west. These winds push warm water near the surface in their direction of travel, so the warm water piles up on the western side of the ocean around Asia and Australasia. On the other side of the ocean, around South and Central America, as the warmer water gets pushed away from the coast, it's replaced by cold water which is pulled up from deeper down in the ocean, a process called upwelling. This creates a temperature difference across the tropical Pacific, with warmer water piled up in the west and cooler water in the east. Warmer water adds extra heat to the air, which causes the air to rise with more vigour and it's this rising air that creates an area of more unsettled weather with more cloud and rainfall. That rising air in the west sets up atmospheric circulation across this part of the world with warm moist air rising on one side of the ocean and cooler drier air descending on the other. This circulation reinforces the easterly winds so this part of the world sits in a self-perpetuating state until El Nino begins. If conditions are right, tropical Pacific weather systems, or slow changes in the ocean around the equator, can set off a chain of events which weaken or even reverse the usual trade winds. With weakened trade winds, there's less push of warm surface water to the western side of the ocean, and less upwelling of cold water on the eastern side. This allows the usually colder parts of the ocean to warm, cancelling out the normal temperature difference. Because the area of warmest water moves, so does the associated wet and unsettled weather. This changes rainfall patterns over the equatorial Pacific, as well as the large-scale wind patterns. It's this change in winds which has a knock-on effect, changing temperature and rainfall in locations around the world. The main impacts are around the tropics. That starts to happen, there's a cascade of impacts across the tropical Pacific. The expanded pool of cooler than normal water shifts the normal thunderstorm activity westward from the central Pacific toward Indonesia, where waters are warmer than average. Strong thunderstorm activity pumps heat and moisture into the upper atmosphere, disturbing global circulation patterns. The jet stream, which is a river of air moving from west to east, begins to pull back or retract toward Asia. Downstream of that, over the Pacific Ocean and North America, there are pronounced changes in the circulation. Over the Gulf of Alaska, there tends to be higher than average pressures with lower than average pressures over the western part of North America. Downstream, over the southeast, there are often higher than average pressures. This type of influence from one region to another over large parts of the globe is referred to as a teleconnection. Americans are interested in La Nina because of impacts over the United States. In general, La Nina leads to more cold air outbreaks over the northern tier, while it tends to be warmer and drier than average across the southern tier. 
the Pacific Northwest and the Ohio When the Earth rotating in its equator region, maximum amount of sunlight will reflect on sea level. As a result, sea level temperature will raise. Due to Earth rotation, wind from different direction hit on ocean surface. This will raise pressure level above sea water and pressure will decrease below sea level surface. This phenomenon will create swirl on water at sea surface where maximum pressure occurred. This whirl of water is called as vertex. On center of vertex creating a place like pit, this is named as eye, and surround the area of pit is named as eye wall. The wind that pushes from different directions spin through eye and air become warm, then goes up from ocean. The evaporation process occurs, while warm air goes up. The swirl of water will move slowly depend on earth rotation in wind direction. When cyclone hit the land, there is no longer fed by energy but, in sea level energy feeds to cyclone continuously. After certain time of survive on land cyclone relieve its energy absolutely. Even though cyclone not fed by energy on land, heavy cyclone will cause much more damage on land. A storm will swirl in clockwise direction at south pole and swirl in anti-clockwise direction at North Pole, swirling direction of storm will change depend on Earth rotation. When the storm's speed is 39 mile per hour, then it is called as tropical storm, as well as when storm obtains speed of 74 mile per hour, then it is officially announced as tropical cyclone. Funnel-shaped winds of a tornado are easily recognizable, and they can be very dangerous. But what causes these unique and violent